Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConaughey at YouTube with a, another 3D printing video where we learn a bit more about resin curing, SLAs and the Spark Maker. Today we're going to be printing a largish desktop Goblin Slayer helmet from the animation and manga. Learning a bit more about the digital processing of the files from the downloading on Thingiverse, having a look at the downloadable files, all the information and tips coming from the platform and gallery examples of uh, other prints and variants other makers have created. Credit to the original creator of the file and remix in the link down below. Clicking on download all files, we're going to get this folder with an STL file, the images, licenses, all the information we want in a zip. Going onto a Google search, and interestingly enough, through research, anything from tanks to fictional characters, you can type in the name of the character, what their height is, and you'll find a website, forum, or whatnot, discussing and displaying all of this information from wikis, fandom sites, and historical data logs. Entering this information into uh, scalemodeler.com scale model calculator, I'm able to put in the one to one subject as per dictated from the website and the scale that I desire if I wish to make it comparable to a scale model and get the exact measurement out in millimeters or for you imperial guys, inches, quarter inches. Back to Google, you can download for free off Autodesk, Autodesk mesh mixer which is a CAD processing software for sorting out any sort of files and outputting them into STL in the exact dimensions and volume thicknesses you want for the purposes of 3D printing or viewing. I've also downloaded my helmet stand which I'll be hollowing to make a lot less resin wasted and to prevent distortion as well as using the scale information correctly from the website and scaling the helmet to size and suit. This is as simple as clicking on uh, edit hollow which will make the stand hollow to one or two mil and scaling the helmet through unit measurements and entering the height that I want through the correct axis which is normally the Z axis for height or the frontage the X axis. Uh, this platform works in millimeters. When you're going to save as or process, make sure you output in STL, not object, OBJ. Going on to slicing, I use SparkMaker Studio as it's indigenous to the 3D printer, which puts out a WOW file for the 3D printer to read. It cannot translate an STL file immediately as the process of slicing is placing it on the bed of the printer and communicating each layer for the resin to be cured or laid if it's an FDF printer. Putting the SDL file in, this time back to being raw, it's way too massive and the file is suitable for a full scale fit on your head helmet. Again with the millimeter distance we got through the scale model calculator we can also shrink it down but that's not going to save it into the SDL file. What we did in Mesh Mixer made it permanent. Slicing software will get the same result but you're going to be scaling it differently every time you manually scale it from the slicing software. However, many of them may not necessarily hollow. It's also important to get the right orientation correct and adding supports so it's connected to the bed and does not cause problems or just outright fail to print. This takes a bit of practice there's quite a few tutorials online and it's a learning curve that you have to go through in studying to 3D print. The lowest points you want them to be nice and thick and the rest of them nice and thin to easily cut, remove and sand. Also consider when you're putting multiple models on a bed the meshes can up and touch each other or even cross over 
This will cause the two models to fuse together or be stuck from the printing process making it so you'd have to cut them apart. If you wish to assemble a model it's best to do it in a CAD program. In the way of laying supports, getting the right thickness, thickness to the material and processing a model to be 3D printable as not all models that are bought CAD or downloaded from Thingiverse is possible to be 3D printed and different printers have different tolerances to what models they can put out. Watching a series of tutorials, work in progress videos, YouTubers and failed as well as successful prints will teach you in what the tolerances are and for every print you do with every success and failure will hollow out what is possible and not possible. Changing from different 3D printers will also teach you more about their medium and bringing your experience to the different materials and methods. I loaded the WoW file onto a SD card, loaded it in the 3D printer, made sure I had enough curing time and other settings to stick well to the bed. Though, nonetheless, using a slightly different resin, I had a bit of a distortion issue as the raft was curling upwards, slightly distorting the model, more so the helmet stand than the helmet itself. This, in the 3D printing world, would be considered a mechanical failure and a completely useless model. As I'm looking for appearance and the supports held it together well enough that the helmet has retained its shape and size, it's enough of a success for me to further processing it, cutting it off the raft, multiply soaking it in alcohol and water to process further. Weighing in at only 51 grams, not a lot of material has been wasted and it was a fairly cheap print. The stand is a bit of a write-off but with a bit of putty I was able to make it flat to the ground and finish the top with a bulb. The helmet itself has been sanded with uh, sandpaper and a treatment of primer and putty to make it more smoother and polish to paint it with metallics via airbrush. Due to the printing process quarter of a mil a layer has been cured in resin there's going to be a bit of z-axis ridging if we were to print it immediate paint it immediately even in something like metallics and apply a wash to it straight out of the printer and proper cleaning it is still a bit soft and can take to sandpaper very very well flattening out those little ridges to be something a bit more smoother to make the resin as rigid as possible as it hardens under uv light i put it in a nail uv light container or a uv tank used in the industry or specially bought to make it as hard as humanly possible this way i'm able to apply products like Mr. Dissolved Putty Primers, other type of soft putty to get into any nook and cranny that might be a problem, a fault, a mark left behind by a support and sand it after it's been fully cured. With a coat of primer, I'm able to see if there's any imperfections, mistakes, fix it again. This is sort of the same as resin modeling or scale modeling and continue to prime and paint as usual. The final step, I hit the surface with multiple sandpapers in its primer form, going to very high grit sanding sponges and polishing products to get as shiny surface as humanly possible. Utilizing a airbrush, I gave it a metallic black coat with multiple layers of gloss and polished that again to be quite shiny. I used four layers of metallic airbrush paint chrome burnt iron gun metal and silver to get different tones of uh, different layers of glare that you would get from a stylized uh, comic manga and from the anime source material itself looking at the art from the start of the video and watching the series they spend a lot of time underground and in dark areas and you'd have very dramatized shadowing and glints 
in this uh, rustic looking armor. I would layer some paint and then use liquid mask to get the area that would be quite fascinating and in its black form I used pinstriping masking hobby tape to get all the edges instead of edging it with a paintbrush or a brush or weathering methods later on. This gave a very unique finish However, it was a bit tricky to remove the masking and the latex masking at a later date. I would give half of the uh, helmet, once everything is removed, a liquid black clear coat to darken half of it, again to imitate the artwork at the start of the video as reference. You also notice a glowing red eye, which the original intention was to put an LED inside from butchering a cheap $2 torch and coloring the lead red or swapping it to a red LED. This came a bit too uh, complicated and was not too fast so I used a rhinestone gem on the inside of the uh, helmet stand to come through when light reflects and this was more than a sufficient uh, effect for uh, photography purposes. If I was to put it on display at a hobby show and to be uh, noticed from any direction that you're standing and looking at it and to catch the eye, a red LED may be put in at a later date, especially as a lighting effect in a dark room. I chose not to give the model an overall clear coat as each layer of paint had a different uh, finish some from matte to frost to a very deep gloss. Uh, this just made it very playful and interesting as it would glint in the uh, light for photography or personal viewing. This pretty much concludes the build. I'm pretty pleased how this model came out and that the overall effect has pretty much achieved to what I wanted. I've done helmets with a metallic sheen in the past and seen the ridges. Well, this one is uh, not as obvious, mostly due to improvement on filling and polishing methods. Though this would have been a lot easier if this was a very successful print and would have required a ton less work and use of product on my part where I'm more inspired to get the process down pat with the correct use of uh, the resin curing time, tuning and setting up of the printer. This happened quite a while ago with uh, experimental use of uh, product but I assure the methods are a little more refined at to this stage not seen on camera and there are plans in the foreseeable future to upgrade the printer to get higher products quality products out of the machine that even with something very cheap limited and uh, massive mistakes and the willingness to uh, fix be creative and utilize old-fashioned mechanical skills it is still a very handy tool to have at your disposal. had quite a bit of fun with this uh, build, a bit of a project to prove with it and something to display. Thank you very much for watching as always until next time. Stay tuned for further content. We'll catch you next time. Check out the links down below in the description section, especially the link to the original file for download as well as my social media feeds and we'll catch you guys next time.